Welcome, everybody, to the Benzinga Crypto Show. Exciting day in the markets. Got a lot to cover, so I'm not going to waste any of you guys' time. We're going to talk Coinbase. We got a special guest appearance from the COO of Bitflyer. It's going to be an exciting show, so let's get into it. What up, Catherine? What up, John? What up? Absolutely. Yeah. This is this is a very exciting day and a very exciting time for, for our industry. So we're going to look at the markets briefly, and then we're going to be joined by Jowell from Bitflyer USA um, and talk all things Coinbase, everything you guys want to know. <laughs> we're going to talk about that. So let's take a look at the markets because we are in a very interesting season, and I'm going to tell you all about it. But first, let's just take a look. Yeah, let's get into it after we run our intro, right? Super yes. cool intro. Let's start the show. Gets me every single time. <laughs> Time. I love that intro. It's yeah. Oh, so great. So, how are markets looking today? Can Let's we take check a look? It out. Yeah, absolutely. Where'd my mouse go? There it is. Boom and boom. Yeah, I expected that. Wow. Pretty, pretty, okay. Pretty really good cool for Bitcoin. <laughs> I like yeah, that. For sure. So, um, I'm just going to go go right ahead and then start and talk about Bitcoin. Bitcoin has hit new all time high. Uh, earlier today in the very early morning uh, for New York. Um, and uh, it is $63,000, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, $63,000. So currently we're seeing a, a price uh, a little bit higher than that. It is currently at $63,429. It is uh, the highest price in history ever. Um, and I can assure you, because I have checked, <laughs> I have I have checked it is it is fact checked that uh, all the market participants are actually uh, thinking that this is all due to the fact that Coinbase is going public tomorrow. Yeah, uh, and, uh, John and I had time. a conversation. Yeah, John and I had a conversation about that just yesterday. I asked uh, the Coinbase IPO is that an indicator of you know Bitcoin performing well as well. Oh, for sure. Not only Bitcoin, but uh, other crypto cryptocurrencies as well. Um, so as you can see, it is, let me just double check on my charts because it's always changing. It doesn't matter how well prepared I am. So it is up by 6% uh, in the last 24 hours. Uh, and uh, I don't think it's going down uh, yet. <laughs> Tomorrow is a big day for the crypto industry. But I'd love to talk a little bit about the dominance in the markets, right? So Bitcoin dominance actually fell to a two-year low of 55.43. According to data from TradingView, um, if Aaron, if you could please just put it on the screen. Um, I the, can. I, I got it right here. Go. Oh, so, oh, it's like 50, 55 already. So see, 55.20, 20, 20, 24. So it's changing and fluctuating a little bit as we speak. But what, it, what this actually means that this altcoin rally has come to be known as the alt season, marked by several cryptocurrencies outperforming Bitcoin for a period of sixty to ninety days, uh, in terms of big, uh, in terms of the market dominance. Right. So Ethereum is actually standing at eleven point nine percent right now in, in terms of market dominance. Um, and uh, if we can look at, at at another chart by Blockchain Center, um, mm -hmm. they uh, this data platform uh, actually confirms that we are we might be entering this altcoin season where altcoins are taking over bitcoin in terms of not not price but market market dominance and this is exactly what we're seeing right now so according to blockchain center um yeah april has proven to be altcoins month month evidenced by the fact that 75 percent 75 percent of the top 50 coins by market cap performed performed better than bitcoin over the last 30 days. And if you if you remember our previous uh, segments and episode, we have talked about top five for performance and other, you know, big per best performing cryptocurrencies. And it was not Bitcoin. <laughs> so I think, yeah. you know, I think this is this all makes sense. Um, I think I think I have asked you guys personally, both Aaron and John, whether you hold Bitcoin and Ethereum. So <laughs> um, so I think 
this might be a, this is just this is a disclaimer this is my personal opinion this might be a great time to enter the cryptocurrency market uh you know with with any other cryptocurrency other than bitcoin because it's still too high to uh to enter and to buy so ethereum again at all time high right now it is currently trading at two thousand and two hundred and ninety dollars up uh by seven points fifty five fifty two percent it was the it was last time i checked was oh, okay so sorry i'm i'm checking it again so i was getting ready for the show it, it has changed again it's always changing. always changing always changing yeah welcome to the crypto <laughs> world so it is up by eight point sixty five percent over the last twenty four hours and it is currently trading at two hundred sorry two thousand three hundred and twelve dollars Aaron, you should have bought in earlier. <laughs> this, uh, is, I know. <laughs> this is this is I keep is kicking things. myself and it's you again know, old, old yeah. coin season is on the market. So yeah, it's what, definitely you know, season. Watch, watch out. Kevin, you, you mentioned Bitcoin being too high to buy. I don't think it's I at the beginning of this year I said three hundred thousand dollars is my price target, and that was before I knew Tesla was gonna get into it, or really many of these other companies. Uh so I don't know. I think it's definitely a long way to go, but you're absolutely right. Like it's crazy. Like KuCoin last week went up 160% uh in one week. Um I think just the thing is Bitcoin's had such a big market cap, like it's not gonna move like it's not gonna move forty percent on Coinbase's IPO just because well, I mean it might, but it's not gonna like pop in an, in, in, in a minute. I mean, maybe, but I, I highly doubt it just because it's so big. But uh, there's a lot of other opportunities. I'm definitely in a lot of these other altcoins and have, have, have seen really good returns better than Bitcoin. But in all honesty, like I'm, I, I've been thinking this for a while now, but I'm starting to measure my actual wealth in Bitcoin because uh, to me, what it is, is about, it's about like a lot of these altcoins is about how much alpha you can get versus Bitcoin. So when you're in, you're talking about this Bitcoin dominance, it's like, if you look at how this whole entire market works, like I remember when I first got into Coinbase, like got I, Bitcoin like took over in 2017, like craziness happened, dominated the cycle, and everyone you know getting on Coinbase so much that they broke the everyone was breaking the site, um, and just the way that the market was like working, where everyone would put their 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 gains into Bitcoin from all these crazy other altcoins that they would get, and eventually like the cycle ended, and too much too much assets went into a bunch of shitty projects that weren't going to pan out. But if you held for the long term, like if you hold some of those, not all of them, but if you some of those assets, those altcoins assets that you you held them since that since that crash, you made even more money now than you probably made off of Bitcoin. I'm not sure. I haven't done the math on some of them, but um, yeah, I mean. I think Bitcoin still got a lot ways, long ways to go, and, and Coinbase, this Coinbase IPO is going to be very interesting. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. I'm still kind of on the fence on which way it'll go. I think it'll probably go up given the way that this is going and the news that we've seen. But I don't know. You, what do you guys think? Uh, for sure, it's not only me, but the entire market and the entire cryptocurrency industry is saying the same thing that we're going to see uh, a huge <laughs> inflow of new traders coming in. In, in, in the space, uh, probably it's not as healthy as it can be, but you know, so we're, we're uh, back, you know, back end, we're trying to help our guests join us. It just, so just might be a little bit delay there, but I'm gonna, mm -hmm. I'd love to talk about, uh, we'll, we're just trying to figure this out as we, as we go. So uh, Ripple, Ripple, I mean, it has been over 28% the last time I checked, but let me just double check. Um, of course. So now it's up thirty-seven percent. See, it's just it was an hour ago. It, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I can't even. So, uh, Ripple is uh, is up again, and it has been uh, going up since Friday when um, uh, Ripple, the company, actually got uh, pretty great news from the federal judge that is overseeing their case uh, over the alleged illegal uh, securities sale um, back in 2017. So, um, federal judge actually threw away the uh, not the allegations, but the the fact that. Uh, Ripple uh, CEO and management have to they, they have to provide like personal statements. So since then, mm -hmm. Ripple has been going up and has has been going up pretty steadily. Um, and a lot of exchanges moved 
uh, great quantities of the coin. And to prove that, we have a couple of uh, tweets uh, by uh, by a an account called Whale Alert. And I know that Aaron is busy right now, so he probably can't actually put them on the screen. We're just trying to, to, to no. get our guest on Absolutely. the show. We actually are all set. Uh, Joel is ready for us to join whenever. Okay. Okay, so, so let's just look. Are you look guys at, ready? I'll get them on the screen. Let, let's just look at at, at just at one tweet yep, by Will. Let's, and, yeah, let's go over one more item and then get them on. Yes. So Ripple, the display part in the dock, you can see it. So again, uh, a, a lot of uh, qu quantities of the, of the coins have been moved uh, over the last. I think like 72 hours actually. So uh, because everybody now believes that this case might be, uh, you know, uh, might be overturned in some in some case or Ripple might actually win this. So a lot of hopes are put into this. So can we can we look at the whale? Yeah. So uh, if you're looking at the, can, can you please make it bigger if it's possible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Sorry about that. So at least. At least three million, more than three million XRP, uh, you know, ha ha has been moved from unknown wallet to Binance. So it makes it over five million dollars. So, and it's not. I mean, if you look at Whale Alert uh, Twitter feed, you can see that a lot more alerts. So. XRP coins are moving and we're definitely in the altcoin season. But as Jowl is actually here with us, uh, we can just start and discuss Coinbase. All right. Yeah, absolutely. So let's move over. The COO of Bitflyer, Joel Egerton. Edgerton. I, I hopefully I hopefully I said it the first uh the first way, right? So uh, let me bring him over and he could tell us himself. Hey, how's it going, Joel? Hey, it's going good. It's going good. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today on such a short notice. Yeah, it glad to see you got your devices working on the phone at least. Yeah, uh, we're, we're pretty tight on security, so getting stuff to work sometimes is a pain. But. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. So can you, can, can you clarify uh, regarding your, your, your surname? Is it uh, Edgerton or Edgerton? Uh, Edgerton. 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 See, it was right. Okay. Mm. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to talk about Coinbase, all things Coinbase. So let me just recap real fast, right? So Coinbase is set to go public tomorrow. It will list uh, shares on the public stock market uh, through direct listing of the NASDAQ exchange. The ticker is COIN, and the opening price is expected to be around $400. Uh, but even though, uh, you know, we usually expect the the shares be available when the markets open specifically at 9 30 uh, est am est it's not gonna it's not gonna be that way right because it is a direct listing and uh, uh employees and other insiders have the option to sell their existing shares rather than the companies just issuing any stock so as it would have happened in a conventional initial public offering so um first of all Joel, mm. Coinbase IPO, is it a good thing or a bad thing for the industry? I think it's a great thing for the industry. Um, I think it shows a lot of the maturity in the industry. Um, and, and it brings, I think, a lot of uh, information about the company and about the industry to us. It, the way I look at it is, you know, if you, I, I'm going to date myself and I'm going to look really old, but uh, if you look at like the AOL uh, IPO back in way, way back in 1992, right? That was kind mm -hmm. of a watershed moment for, for the internet. And I think Coinbase it, it, IPO is a similar kind of moment. Um, and I think it's also at a similar point in time. We are way early in the, the crypto market um, and there will be a lot more uh, information and a lot more fun to see. And can you tell us, uh, I, I should have asked that a little bit earlier, but can you tell us a little bit about what Bitflyer does? Sure, sure. So Bitflyer is um, a centralized cryptocurrency exchange. We are the largest crypto exchange in Japan with around, I guess, around 40% of the market share in Japan. Um, we're also licensed in the US and we're also licensed in Europe. So we're the only uh, centralized exchange that's licensed in all three of those locations. Uh, even Coinbase doesn't have that. Um, so in the U.S., we're available in about 48 different states, um, and we have kind of similar offerings to Coinbase. We have, you know, a retail arm and a professional arm for kind of institutional traders or active traders. 
Uh, so you've, you've mentioned that you are Japan based in the first place, right? So how difficult it is for a crypto exchange to expand to the US? Does it take a lot of compliance, for instance? Uh, yes, it takes a lot of compliance. <laughs> a lot of compliance, a lot of lawyers. Um, and in particular, you know, because we're a Japanese exchange, the, the laws in Japan are, are much tighter than the laws in the U.S. are much tougher oh, than wow. the laws in the U.S. Um, so we meet that standard. Uh, and then we come into the U.S. So we're very safe, very well established. Uh, and like I said, we, we very much... Uh, pride ourselves on, on being a safe place and being licensed. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So uh, John actually has uh, an idea because he has used Coinbase. I think it was your first ever exchange you've used, right? Y yep, I used Coinbase and then I got uh, some Ripple, I think, from Shapeshift. So <laughs> rub that up to three dollars and then in the market. Do you remember? Do you remember what year that was? Because the company itself was founded in uh, twenty twelve. Mm. Did you guys hear me? 2012. They've been around for a while. For a while. So do you remember Coinbase what year? Left. Yeah. I first signed up for Coinbase in 2017. Yeah, 2017. I actually mid, just mid I actually just opened up a Coinbase account probably last week. So <laughs> for the I'm, I'm, I'm new. I'm new. Okay. You're new. There's a lot of time. Joel, have you personally used Coinbase? Have you tried or seen or checked it? Yeah, I mean, I obviously check our competitors, so I, I look mm -hmm. at a lot of different um, ones. Uh, Coinbase is one of them, obviously. Right. So my, my question is, the valuation, the current valuation is actually um, at around $100 billion, mm -hmm. right? I saw reports, and there are, there are some reports available, that this will actually be a $100, $140 billion IPO. Mm -hmm. um, before, before I get to some comments from analysts, mm -hmm. do you think it's a fair valuation? Is, is it the valuation that actually makes sense? Um. I think in the longer term, yeah. Um, if I remember correctly, the last thing I saw is basically a PE of around 90. So that's a really high PE. But, you know, considering the growth, I mean, we had them just recently come out in this most recent quarter saying they made as much money in the most recent quarter as they did the entire year before. Um, and crypto is a very scalable industry, right? Um, when the their volatility in the market, you know, we can't suddenly just add machines or whatever. We, we have to be able to scale. Uh, and the business model also scales. Um, so I think it is a, a reasonable valuation. Uh, and I think if you're a long term investor, that type of uh, company that has a, a solid business model, they're already profitable uh, and can scale is something to definitely look into. Um, well, I have a market research from from the from a market research firm, New Construct, that believes, and I'm going to quote: the company has little to no chance of meeting the future profit expectations that are baked into this ridiculously high expected valuation of 100 billion dollars. I, um, I think one yeah. interesting thing is it's like I mean a lot of this depends where the price of Bitcoin goes, right? Because mm -hmm. If Bitcoin ends up in six months at a half a million dollars and people are paying a half a percent to run their transactions, like <laughs> these guys are just going to continue to mint money. Mm -hmm. So we'll see where this goes. Mm -hmm. um, I had w one quick question, if you mind, Catherine. Um, so um, Coinbase is like has this wa uh, this wait list for staking Ethereum. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious, like I'm cu really curious how this plays out. Like when when more and more people. Uh, are able to stake their Ethereum on Coinbase, which is, you know, they have like $90 billion of customer assets or something. I'm not sure how much of that is Ethereum mm. versus Bitcoin, but that's a lot of Ethereum that could be staked mm. um, on an exchange like Coinbase. Mm. Um, do you, what are your thoughts on that, Joel? And do you, have, do you offer your customers the same type of uh, ability to stake their assets? Um, in Japan, we do. In the U.S., not. Um, so we're definitely looking to that space. But I think you bring up a good point and probably something the, the analyst you quoted earlier doesn't quite get is the, the business models are still evolving. So right now, if you look at Coinbase, you know, and the same for us, most of our money is coming from transactions, um, the fees on the transactions. Um, mm -hmm. And then you have other business models like a BlockFi, right, who makes money off of the spread on savings. So if you just do a, a, a simple savings product. So if you have a huge amount of assets under management and then you add in something like uh, a staking or, or a savings type of product 
um, that unleashes a whole nother revenue stream that, that didn't exist before with very mm-hmm. little change to your underlying business and your underlying costs. Right. That's why I'm saying that that scalability is definitely important when thinking about crypto companies. Well, I'm, I'm just putting a, a link to our chat so Aaron could uh, put it on the screen. Uh, this is a Coinbase earnings report. Uh, I'm getting a 404. Oh my God, no way. <laughs> This is this is a, a earnings report for you. <laughs> okay, let me try one more time. Maybe hmm, here we go. What about oh, there now? It is, there it is. There it is. Okay. Okay. So we can just put it on the screen um, and take a look at what the company says. So I I actually love the the line remote first company. <laughs> I know for a mm-hmm. fact that it's not true. They prefer people uh, working for them to be U.S. based. Mm-hmm. So so there's that <laughs> verified users. They have a a number of verified users of 56 million right now. Um, I mean, it, um, March um, up to March 31st. Monthly transaction users of 6.1 million. Hmm. Assets on pla- I'm sorry, John. You, you want to say something? Or no, no, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Assets assets on platform of 223 billion, representing 11.3 percent crypto asset market share. And while we're looking at it, I'd love to sort of add to that report. Um, that says that according to to the analyst of the report, they explained that the crypto market is still very young and mm-hmm. many more companies will compete with Coinbase in the future, which would cause Coinbase transaction margins to drop uh, in, you know, in a very big way. And uh, they sort of cite the so-called race to the zero that saw stock exchanges decrease their fees, noting that the crypto space is headed in the, in the same direction uh, and which will probably cause com- competitors to force Coinbase to cut its trading fees to stay competitive. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah. can we comment a little bit on that? Uh, or do you, do you still think that the, the analysts might be wrong about that? I mean, I, I think that they're right. There is definitely going to be more price comp- competition. Um, I think it's also important when they say that we're still early, right? If this was a baseball game, right, it's not first inning. It's not even, you know, when the national anthem's playing, the teams haven't even really arrived in the stadium yet. That's mm-hmm. where we are in, in crypto. Um, so there will be more competitors and there will be more price competition. I mean, even now, if you look at uh, uh, Coinbase Pro, right, when you come in, they're, they're charging, you know, half of 1%, right? So 50 basis points. We only charge 10 basis points right. uh, at BitFlyer, right? And, and we are profitable. Um, so I think, you know, the, the idea that there will be uh, a decrease in the fees is absolutely right. But if you look at the, the 6 million um, active trans, uh, transactions, active users, customers, um, there's 320 million people in the U.S. and there's only 6 million people that are active on their platform. You compare that to how many people that are active with banks, right? And that's who our competitor really is. It's banks. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a very tiny number that can get much larger. So the pie is going to get bigger and crypto will basically eat the banks. Sure. Uh, and, and then $400 per share. Is that a fair uh expected price right now or do you see it going lower and or higher tomorrow? yeah I, I sent out a tweet earlier this morning about predicting prices for crypto um i'm really bad about that <laughs> um so i think you know. we all are yeah i think everybody is you never know higher, higher long term that's the easy analytics yeah. included <laughs> yeah i would say you know as far as like the, the, the price at the moment right <laughs> It's up to the market to tell us what the price is at the moment. But longer term, um, yeah, I think it's a long term investment. Um, And I think, you know, the company will grow. I mean, if you look at Apple in its early days compared to Apple today, it's grown a lot and its market share has grown and its profitability has grown. I think Coinbase is going to be the same kind of thing. I think the the one thing with Coinbase, too, is they just like really nailed down the user experience. It's so easy to just get onto their platform, connect and just buy buy currency like they just they i mean there's other platforms that are good but i mean they just they definitely make it easy yeah uh, other than them crashing every time there's a, a you know, a lot well, of there's, oh, there's that. 
Oh, is that, well, is that this is just a little or... shade to the computer. <laughs> yeah. Well, it depends, it's, I guess it depends when you're buying, right? Like they make it easy for when that is not the problem, but that is definitely yeah. a problem that they are going to be obviously a much more uh, in the, like, you know, the stock price could easily be affected by that. So that's something that they get need to avoid going forward for sure. Yeah. They're definitely a pace setter in the industry. Yes. And hopefully they are ready for for the amount of users and just people checking out their platform tomorrow and go you know <laughs> going forward. So just just to recap, Coinbase is going to issue 114.9 million shares tomorrow. We will not know the price tomorrow, even though we really want to. We will not know it. It will it will only become available on Wednesday because it's direct listing in the first place. So I do have a couple of comments from the industry leaders. Uh, they they are all pretty optimistic. But let me just uh, let me just look at them and read them real quick. So we have Harumi Utara Thompson, CIO at Celsius Network, the rewards earning crypto platform. Um, so and they say uh, an event like this brings attention to our industry and I trust that and I trust that how the market is performing at the moment is no coincidence. And I think actually to to the point that John brought earlier um, and, and Jowell as well. So um, we have seen reports on Reddit that people are just logged out of their Coinbase account or they cannot access uh, their their assets and it is actually isolated reports we did not see like a huge flow of complaints like that but i think this is something that coinbase might be expecting in the next uh couple of days so again i i just hope that they are prepared for that what else we have anthony trenchev at nexo a lending institution in the digital finance industry um and he says that coinbase listen um feels the same as uh, for crypto as Google's IPO was for the internet. 2021, this four-hour space is the breakthrough year that 2004 was for Silicon Valley's tech companies. It's actually a pretty great point. <laughs> Just over 15 years on, it's hard to imagine life pre-Google. The coin listing sets a precedent and a benchmark for the rest of the cryptocurrency industry. It lays the groundwork for financial reporting for the native companies. One, that does justice to the technology of transactions on the blockchain mm -hmm. and the seasonality of the market that can make or break a company. I have not actually seen a negative uh, comment on uh, Coinbase IPO, except just Bitcoin maximalists or cryptocurrency industry maximalists that are saying that Coinbase is not going to be a specifically crypto cryptocurrency company anymore because yeah. it's not the philosophy. Yeah. A crypto company could not go public. Do we have anything to say about that? I mean, I, I wouldn't totally agree with that, right? I mean, uh, one right. of the things... Wouldn't, wouldn't or would? Um, I, I think it's perfectly okay for a crypto company to, to go public. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the idea, I think, is, uh, you know, there, there's a very strong kind of libertarian streak in the crypto industry um, and that that individualism that you want to bank yourself and everything like that. That, that is definitely almost a, a religion within the, the crypto industry. Um, mm -hmm. But I think we need to look at the bigger picture underlying like Bitcoin is blockchain and blockchain right. as a technology is something that can rewire the entire financial industry. Um, it is a massive, massive uh, change industry where there could be huge efficiencies um, from that underlying blockchain technology. That's why I keep on saying, you know, our, our competition is not with each other in the crypto industry. Our competition is the banking system um, and rewiring that banking system so it's fairer for individuals. You know, I want my money to work for me. I don't want it to work for the banks. Right. That is the right. ethics of the, the crypto industry. So. Having uh, a company like Coinbase or any other crypto company have an IPO so they have more resources in order to go out and, and accelerate this change, I think is a good thing for the industry. Uh, and are you considering Absolutely. going public uh, in the U.S. or Japan or maybe Canada? Because Canada seems like a good place for, for crypto companies to go public based uh, on the experience. Yeah, when can we see that BitFlyer IPO? Yeah, no comment. <laughs> oh, okay. We great, have answer, great answer. <laughs> yeah, great answer. Uh, and then, uh, Aaron, uh, if we if we have any questions from the chat, let us know. While I I do have another question. What yeah, we have a we have about another minute or so. So uh, okay. let me see if I can find one one question. Okay. So, um, but in in all fairness, uh, is the U.S. the best company to go public for a crypto company? 
give, given the compliance, the you know regulatory framework, the SEC, what would be the best company to for for a crypto company to go? Sorry, the best country for a crypto company to go public? Ooh, that's a tough question. Um, it is. <laughs> I, I, I don't know is the answer. I think it, it's perfectly fine for like a U.S. company. I, I think there is concerns and, and you see that within the filings uh, of Coinbase about the regulatory uncertainty in the U S um, while, you know, like in our home market of Japan is much more certain. The law is quite clear um, for crypto companies. So that type of risk and uncertainty is much lower in Japan, but the U S is a much larger market. Um, there's a lot more discussion about it in the U S if you're trying to go for an IPO right now, you'll probably get a higher price in, in the U S um, so from that perspective, I think uh, the U.S. Is, is a great place to do. From a regulatory perspective and a risk perspective, you know, someplace like Japan that's kind of already clear or maybe even like a Singapore w w may be a little bit better for that case. Singapore, Gibraltar might be also the place. And Malta was supposed to be the blockchain island, but we haven't yeah. heard a lot, <laughs> <laughs> heard a lot from Malta in a while. I think they changed their mind. Yeah. Aaron, do you have uh, any questions before we... Uh, uh, nothing that the mods haven't handled already, so... All okay, then. so tomorrow, NASDAQ, <laughs> ticker COIN as in C-O-I-N, mm. Coinbase is going public. This is a huge event for the crypto industry. Uh, tune in tomorrow for our show. We're gonna, I think we're going to talk about you know, Coinbase IPO all day. <laughs> all day. It'll be the talk of the day for sure. Yeah, it'll be the talk of the day. Joel, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you for, for, you know, for sharing your experience with us. And good luck with uh, expanding in the U.S. and any other country. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We'll definitely be looking forward to growing here. Yep. Thank cool. you so much. Thanks, Joel. Have Thank a good you. one. Bye-bye. Have a good one. All right. So that was fantastic. Great guest. Had a lot of insight there. Um, fantastic stuff that he's doing over with his platform. Uh, but that's it. That's our show for today. Was, we couldn't get to too much Coinbase. I mean, we got to a lot, obviously, there's, but there's yeah. so much more. There's a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it's it's just it's about to blow up. So just stay Trust tuned. Me. Stay yeah. and follow the news. <laughs> Benzinga.com is the place to be. But for that, thank you, John. Thank you, Catherine. Fantastic show. Thank Love you, having you guys on the show. Um, Thanks, Aaron. So I'm going to transition. I'm going to remove these guys.